Hi, and welcome back to another of British University Vietnam's English for Hospitality videos. Unfortunately, sometimes in the hospitality sector we do get difficult situations, but what we need to do is be able to deal with these professionally and compassionately. One of these issues is complaints. Now, nobody enjoys dealing with complaints, but if you manage to do so in a mindful and professional manner, there's a much higher chance that the guests can walk away still with a positive image of the hotel in mind. Today we're going to have a look at the LAST acronym and that stands for Listen, Apologise, Solve and Thank. Okay, so as I've just said, the LAST acronym stands for Listening, Apologise, Solve and Thank. Whilst each case needs to be treated individually, this structure can help make sure that you hit some of the most important components of providing good hospitality customer service. Let's jump in and have a look at what they mean exactly and some phrases that we can use when dealing with our customers' complaints. So, firstly, listen. Now, it's important to make a distinction between listening and hearing. Whilst these two words are very similar, they have important distinctions and understanding these distinctions can help make us into better listeners. Let's start off with hearing. Hearing simply means that we acknowledge there is some sound. We can hear the sound of an aeroplane overhead or of traffic in the street, but we're not necessarily doing it on purpose. The sound comes our way. Listening, however, involves hearing, but is much more active. We can choose the types of details we specifically listen out for, and in good customer service, we need to use active listening to give us the best opportunity to show the customer we care and deal with their problem as well as we can. We're now going to have a look at some of the ways we can ensure we commit to active listening when dealing with our guest complaints. Firstly, focus. Sometimes it's easy to try and focus on what your response is going to be, but this can lead us to miss out on some crucial details and takes the spotlight from them to us. We want to make sure that they feel heard and that they have a platform for expressing their feelings. However, you shouldn't just focus on what they're saying. It's also what they're not saying which is important. A lot of communication actually comes from the way we use our body and the way we alter our speech, rather than just the words we say. Pay attention to how they're using their body language to tune in better to how they feel and ensure your response acts to remedy this. Clarify. Using questions is a really important way of showing the customer that you are listening and engaged and also dedicated to understanding their situation or issue. Make sure, however, that you don't interrupt them with your questions, but use them sparingly to tease out extra details which will both help your response and also allow the customer to feel like they are being heard. Attention. There is nothing worse than trying to explain a situation to someone who seems preoccupied by something else. Make sure your full attention is on the customer. If you are doing something, then stop and show them that you care about their problem. Repeat. Now this is one we need to be fairly careful with as too much repetition can make us sound like a parrot. Repeat words or phrases back to the customer where appropriate to show that you are truly listening to what they have to say. You can also summarize your customer's issue at the end by saying something like, okay, so just to confirm I understand, to ensure that you have understood the situation correctly and also show the customer that they have been heard. Also, please try and not to take it too personally. Although when customers get upset they express their feelings, it's very easy to take this personally, try your best not to. This doesn't mean that you shouldn't address the issue with care, 
but that you recognize that this customer needs to feel like their problems are heard and this may also come with some emotion. Try and remain as calm as you can and deal with the situation professionally. Okay, so those are some of our top tips for active listening. Let's now move on to apologize. An apology is important to a customer as it shows that both yourself and the company recognize the customer's frustrations and affirm that this is not what the customer should be experiencing. Apologizing shows that the company is taking responsibility for the issue and this can go a long way with customers. Failure to provide an apology can make the customer feel uncared for. Especially in the West, guests expect a certain level of accountability with organizations and so often react well if a company takes responsibility for any problems that may have arisen. Here are some phrases which can be used in this context. I'm sorry to hear that our service wasn't up to our usual standards today. On behalf of company name, I want to apologize for your experience. I want to firstly thank you for bringing this to our attention and apologize for any inconvenience it has caused you. Secondly, when apologizing, an explanation can also go a long way too. Guests often appreciate honesty when it comes to service, and so an apology followed up by an explanation can make the guest respect the hotel's efforts to be as open and direct as possible. But of course, apologizing isn't enough by itself and we need to look at ways of putting things in action to solve the issue at hand. When solving an issue, present what the company has decided to do as compensation for the guest's experience. Guests also like to feel like they have some control over the outcome. So if there are options, present them with a choice. So here are some phrases you can use to show the customer how you're going to remedy the problem. As compensation, we would like to offer you. What we will do is arrange. And finally, to wrap up the acronym, we have THANK. When we thank, we're not just going to say thank you. But we're trying to communicate to the guest that we appreciate speaking to us about the issue and being understanding in the process of solving it. Thanking the customer helps empower them so they walk away feeling respected and appreciated by the company. And these are vital feelings in order to increase the chance of a returning customer. A simple phrase for doing this would be, I want to take this opportunity to thank you for your patience and understanding. Okay, so let's watch the following scene and see if you can see the different components of last. Good morning, front office. What can I do for you? Hi, um, I booked this place because I was told your facilities were wonderful, but to be honest, I'm really not impressed. I'm sorry to hear that. Could you tell me what the problem is, please? Well, for a start, the, the air conditioner keeps turning off by itself and it's far too hot for that to be happening. And, and on top of that, one of the lights is flickering and it's really frustrating. Okay, so just to confirm, I understand there is an issue with the air conditioner alongside one of the lights in the room. That's correct. To be honest, this hasn't been very impressive. I completely understand and I'm very sorry to hear of the issues you've experienced. What we will do for you is send one of our mechanics to check straight away and if they are unable to take care of it, we can move you to an alternative room. How does this sound? Okay, thank you. Thank you for your understanding. And again, I want to apologize for the inconvenience this has caused. Thank you very much. So as a bit of a recap, let's see if you can remember the different components of last. Remember they were listen, apologize, solve, and thank. Okay, so thank you for watching this four-part series from British University of Vietnam on Hospitality English. Hopefully you can see how you can take some of this information and put it into your context, both within the Vietnamese and international hospitality industries.